is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE2301 statics. We're going to talk about the parallel axis theorem and show three examples of the use of it. Another word for the parallel axis theorem is the transfer axis theorem. What we're doing is we're transferring the moment of inertia from one axis to another. Those axes are parallel to each other. I got to transfer it from an x-axis to another x-axis or y to y. But that's the basic concept and why it's called what it is. So this first example, I want to take this blue rectangle, it's six inches tall, four inches wide over here, and transfer its moment of inertia from the centroid. So I'm going to be transferring from the centroidal axis, x prime, the moment of inertia of that over here to the x axis. So on the, I'm going from the x prime axis to the x axis. So I have this formula ix is equal to i bar x prime plus 80y squared term. This area, A, is the area. DY is the distance from the x-axis, the new axis, to the centroidal axis, x prime. So this is a rather easy problem. Uh, we know that for a rectangle from formulas that have been derived from integration, for a rectangle, the centroidal moment of inertia, I bar X prime, about this X prime axis that's through the CG, the center of gravity, or the centroid, is BH cubed over 12. The numbers are, it's 4 wide, which is B, times 6 cubed over 12, and I get 72 inches to the fourth. Moments of inertia are in units of some dimension to the fourth power. Therefore, the parallel axis theorem says that Ix is equal to that number, 72 plus the area, which is 4 times 6, or 24, times this dy distance squared. Okay, I'm going from the new axis, the x-axis, to the centroidal x-prime axis, and that's dy. So that distance is half of its height, or 6 divided by 2, squared and do the math and that works out to be 288 inches to the fourth power. I happen to have a formula for the moment of inertia of a rectangle about its base and that's bh cubed over 3. So I can check that rather easily. Usually you don't have a formula for this but that's 4 times 6 cubed divided by 3 is 288. Checks. Okay, now we want to do a little bit more uh, complicated one for IY, this green triangle down here. And the green triangle has these dimensions of 8 inches tall and 12 inches wide on its base. So, got the same thing. I'm going to transfer the moment of inertia from the y prime axis to the y axis, which is the y prime, to the y. So my dx distance looking ahead is going to be that distance right there. And we'll figure what that is here in a minute. First, I need to know what i bar y prime for a triangle is. 
and I bar Y prime for a triangle is B H cubed or B cubed H over 36. Plug in the numbers, I've got 12 cubed, which is its base, times its height of H divided by 36 is 384 inches to the fourth. Now, the formula is going to look like IY, which is what I'm trying to solve for, is I bar Y prime 384 plus the area, which is easy because it's a triangle, one-half base times height, one-half 12 times 8, that's the area. DX is the distance that I want to know. I'm going to have to do a little geometry, knowing what I know about a triangle. Okay, from, let's say I'm going to reference everything from this corner over in the lower left hand. I want to know the coordinates of that point. Okay, I've got a dimensional in my drawing, a drawing here. Let me correct this dimension right here, because that's going to mess me up for my calculations. I said that this is two inches. Okay, I'm still trying to get the coordinates of this lower left hand corner where I can reference things from. And it is negative two in the X and it's negative four in the Y. That's the coordinates of that point there at the corner of the triangle. Okay, I know that the center of a triangle is one-third of its base from its big end. So we'll do that in green. And I've got the base is 12 inches. So that distance right there is 12 divided by 3, or one-third of 12. So that's 4 inches. I'm trying to find the coordinates of that center of gravity, CG. Okay, in the x direction, which is what I care about for dx, the coordinates are negative 2 plus that 4 inches from that corner, making the coordinate positive 2 inches in the x direction. Therefore, that is my dx distance. So I'm just going to multiply the area, 1 half 12 times 8, times that 2 squared. Do the math and I'm going to get 576 inches to the fourth. So only really way I can check that is I can say well it's bigger than I, y, I bar Y prime which it's got to be because I bar the centroidal moment of inertia is always the smallest number. Now thirdly, I'm going to deal with this IXY product of inertia of this whole thing. And product of inertia is a weird number. It's, it's a second moment of area, but it's not a moment of inertia. And it really just tells me about which quadrant the shape is in, and or more of it it's in, and how far it is, how far, a little bit about how it's spread out. So I have a parallel axis theorem that looks just like the other two for IX and IY and it just says IXY about any XY axis is the centroidal product of inertia plus the area times the DX and DY distances so I got an orange, tri orange rectangle over here that I'm dealing with and it's four inches tall and five inches wide this corner over here in the lower right is located one inch off of the X and Y axis. One inch below the X axis, one inch to the right of the Y axis. So my equation is going to look like I need to figure out what I bar X prime Y prime. Well for a rectangle that number goes to zero by symmetry. 
if one of the axes that you talk about the product of inertia is a, an axis of symmetry, then that is zero. Because we've talked about that, those little differential elements cancel each other out on either side of the axis of symmetry. Anyway, then I need to know the area, which of course is just 4 by 5. Then I need this dx and dy distance. Okay, dx is the distance from the x-axis, this axis, to the x-prime axis. And that is this distance right here. That's dx. That's dy, excuse me. I need to go from y-axis. dx is the distance from y-axis to y-axis. So I started off doing dy. dy is the distance from x to x prime, and that is dy right there. And dx is similarly the distance from y axis to y prime axis. So that's going to be this distance right here. That's dx. Okay, so I just need to locate that centroid. That centroid in the y direction, the thing is 4 inches tall, and I'm starting from this point, which is at um, 1, negative 1. That's the coordinates, of, the Cartesian coordinates of it. I'm going up half of its height, that distance right there. That distance is half of its height, or 4 over 2. So the d y distance, which I'm solving for first, is from negative 1 to 1. Or I'm adding 4 over 2 to that. So it's negative 1 plus 4 over 2. That works out to be just positive 1. The dx distance is from the y-axis to the y-prime axis, need to locate the centroid in the x-direction. Starting off here at negative at 1, negative 1, I go back half of its width, or 5 over 2. So that coordinate, which is going to be my dx distance, is 1, my starting point, minus 5 over 2. So that's going to be negative 1.5. So I do the math and I see 20 times negative 1.5 times 1 is negative 30. My units are once again inches to the fourth and all I can really say is that that means that more of the shape is in the second quadrant than is in the and the fourth quadrant because those are both negative products of inertia than is in quadrant one and quadrant four so that looks good to me